Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and I welcome you back to some more Advanced Wars 2 War Room action. Yes, I thought it was about time I played some more Advanced Wars, haven't been uh, doing a lot of that lately. And there's one map in particular which has been requested probably a, a thousand times, uh, and that is Risky Vale. Um, and for good reason, Risky Vale is actually the hardest War Room map, if not the most difficult map in all of Advanced Wars 2. Uh, no other map even comes close. Strongland, you know, that's easy as shit due to all the missiles. The Ring, you've seen we beat that, that was a joke. Uh, Lost Basin, don't even know what that's doing down here, that's shit easy. Missile Plains, easy as fuck. Banker Hills, not even a challenge. Uh, last Mission, I think, is the only mission that even comes close in terms of difficulty, and even that can easily be shut down by some clever HQ capping. Because that's so scary about um, uh, Risky Vale. The enemy actually has no HQ. You cannot win via HQ cap, and on top of that you face Kumbai. Max 2 is a bit of a pain, but he's nowhere near as dangerous as Kumbai is on this map. And as you can see, you have like two bases and you're surrounded by enemies. It is like a god tier difficult, this uh, map. It wouldn't have been so hard if Kumbai wasn't the uh, enemy, I think. Um, but yeah, um, so the... I've been playing this map for quite some time now, and I've tried to beat it with Adder, and I simply came to the conclusion that I can't do it. It's impossible. Um, I've tried perhaps 100 different strategies, I just can't make it work. Uh, the enemy's too strong, regardless of what I do, I just get overrun. Uh, there might be a way to do it. If any one of you can beat this map with Adder, holy shit would I love to see it. I would seriously call you the best Advanced Wars player of all time. I would give you a shout out, and I will showcase your... If you can record it, I will freaking showcase it on this channel. Because I don't know how the fuck you're supposed to do it. Uh, none of the one Tier 1 or Tier 3 gang, gang or the Tier 3 gang even came close to being able to defeat this map. The only Tier 3 CO who can do it is Sami. Sami. Um, because her infantry is 30% better and this map is all about infantry. Uh, and her extra capture rates allows her to get the upper edge. But even with Sami, it's pretty hard. So, I've decided to use a tier 4 CO. I'm gonna use Nell. And there's a good reason behind this. Um, first of all, I do believe, I, I actually haven't tried, but I'm fairly sure I can beat this map with Nell. Now, a lot of people have been viewing my Advanced Wars tier list lately. Uh, if you haven't viewed it, uh, I'll link it in the video description. I basically rate all of the COs by, by tier, uh, based on my own opinion. And a lot of people are arguing with me over Nell. They think that I'm crazy, batching insane for putting Nell in tier 4. And they don't understand why. And in this uh, playthrough, hopefully, I will show you guys exactly what's so powerful about Nell. Uh, she is insane. So I've also made some discoveries about how Nell works. I think I fully unlocked how the CO works. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how she, uh, how she functions and how her power affects her. And just basically why she is so insanely good. So as you can see right here, you have a lot of bases around you, and you only start with two bases. In the Dual Strike version of this map, I do believe you start with all of these buildings. At least most of them. Which makes the map a complete joke. I also don't think you play against Kumbai, I can't remember. But yeah, Max will initially engage you very soon, uh, and you have to fight him off. And then when Kumbai comes, if you haven't beaten back Max properly, you will lose. So, let's talk a little bit about Nell. So, uh, after researching her doing countless playtests, and um, I, I basically uh, come to the conclusion of how Nell works. So, we all know that Nell is lucky, but exactly how does luck work? Well, um, whenever you... Let's actually start by explaining Nell's luck values. So, uh, her normal day-to-day -day luck is 0 to 15%. Yeah, this, this, that's the number, 0 to 15%. Her normal power, which is called um, Lucky Star, improves her luck from 0 to 60%, and her Lady Luck improves her luck from 0 to 100%. So how, what exactly does this entail? Allow me to explain. So, whenever Nell, Nell takes an engagement, um, she adds a number randomly generated between 0 and 15 to the total percentage damage dealt. So let's say you attack another infantry with an infantry of your own. The damage value for that is 55%. You do 55% damage to the opposing infantry. With now, you randomly generate a number between 0 and 15, and the infantry attacks, adding that number to its firepower. So basically, uh, the Nell's firepower against other infantry has a 55% to 70% firepower rate. Now, what's so unique about this, and this is something I discovered earlier, is that defense actually affects Nell's luck. How? 
Well, it applies the percentage before defense comes into play. So let's say I'm attacking uh, a unit on a mountain. It has four defense, right? I attack with the infantry, I get really lucky, and I max out on luck. So I generate the number 15. So my infantry does 70% damage to the opposing infantry. Then they subtract that number by 40%. So essentially, what this means is that she applies 0 to 15% to all firepower done before defense. This is why I thought it was I, like I thought it was so strange because I did some uh, theory crafting and I noticed that um, units on heavy terrain would take less damage from Nell's lucky strikes, and I thought that the lucky strikes were like a separate hit point based damage that was just added on top, but it actually works with the percentages, and that actually kind of makes sense. Like I hope, I hope I'm explaining this to you in a way that you can understand. I haven't actually planned what to say. So when you then use lucky star, the number goes from zero to fifteen to zero to sixty. So that means, for example, if I attack with my infantry, I can do anywhere between 55% to 115%. Actually, I think that's correct at any rate. Uh, which means that I can pretty much one-shot infantry when I use Lucky Star. And these numbers are pretty good to know because it gives you an idea of exactly how far your firepower can go if you're lucky. Basically, what you could do is you could use probability to calculate exactly how much damage you're capable of doing. So let's say I use Lady, uh, Lucky Star. I can pretty much expect that I will deal 30% more damage on an average basis, like according to probability. So if I attack an enemy infantry and I use Lucky Star and they're on a road so they don't get any defense stars, I can count on my infantry dealing 67, yeah, 85% damage, so that's 8 hit points, basically, whenever I use Lucky Star. Whenever I use uh, Lady Luck, I have a basic probability of doing 50% more damage because it's 0 to 100. So the RNG will most likely be around 50 most of the time, like on a prob probability scale, of course. We all know the RNG can completely screw you off, but still. But because what you have to take into consideration with Advanced Wars is that units don't have 10 hit points, they have 100. They only display 10s. So really, if Advanced Wars were to be completely accurate, units would have like 78 hit points left. However, what's so strange about this die is that they actually have 95 hit points, and it's getting really complicated here, but allow me to exp Whoa, sorry, explain. So, when a unit's hit points dips below 5, that is when it has like one hit point left, and it dips below 5, it dips down to 0. When a unit's hit points dips down to 0, it is destroyed. If you may have noticed that transport uh, transport units, for example, if a battle copter attacks a transport copter, it deals 95% damage. Yet half of the time, it one-shots the transport copter. Why is that? It should have five hit points left. Well, that's because it makes the transport copter's hit points go below five, and then the number that displays change to zero, and it kills the unit. So this is something that's called the 50-50, uh, uh, when you deal 95% damage, because uh, it will basically do a coin flip. Sometimes it will display the number 1, sometimes it will display the number 0, and if it lands on 0, the transport is destroyed. This is why killing transport copters with um, battle copters and um, uh, uh, landers with subs is so extremely random. So I hope I've explained this to you in a good way that you can understand. Uh, it's very complicated, but it all kind of makes sense in a very strange way, because hit points are displayed in numbers of tens. So if you have 26 hit points, you are displayed as having 3 hit points. If you have 24 hit points left, you are displayed as having 2 hit points. But if your hit points happen to be 25, like for example if I deal 75% damage to a unit, a coin flip is, uh, occurs, and it goes basically, it rounds up or down. So it's a little bit of a luck involved, but then again... Everyone kind of benefits from luck one way or another. Uh, Nell just happens to be a CEO that base her playstyle around it. So with these numbers in mind, you can probably understand why I rate N Nell so extremely highly. Lady Luck is insane. Basically, you can see this as a 50% firepower increase that takes place like on, on top of your units. Like It's, it's not even a 50% firepower increase. It's plus 50% damage, which is a lot more because... Um, let's say Max does 55% damage and he adds 50% to that, uh, that number won't be 100. That number will be more around 75% because it adds to the total damage existing value. But with Nell, she deals 55% damage and then she adds 50 on top of that, making it 100, so she one-shots. So she is just borderline broken. It is no other way to describe her. Like, if you still aren't convinced, just consider this for a moment. 
you unlock Nell after Storm. It is harder to unlock Nell than it is to harder to unlock Storm. Naturally, Storm ends up being more powerful in uh, in toe to toe combat, but still, there is a reason why Nell is one of the last DLCs you unlock. She is supposed to be utterly broken, but people don't play Nell. They don't understand why Nell is so important. I should probably play while I speak, but I really felt like getting this off my chest because I read so many comments on a day to day basis that Mangs, why do you rate Nell as tier four? She's like tier two. She's bad. No. Oh, she is super good! You guys don't even begin to understand how powerful she is uh, because of the way the numbers work in this game. It's not even, she doesn't even have like high firepower, she just has hacks firepower. I don't know how else to describe it. You will just, I'll, I'll just show you for myself. I am 100% convinced I can beat this ridiculously difficult map with now. I'm not sure if I'll have like problems or anything, but. I'll at least try to explain. Wow, <laughs> 11 minutes of explaining. You can you can tell I'm kind of enthusiastic about this game. Alright, let's talk strategy. So, first thing we want to do in this map is we want to take the bases. If we don't take the bases, we are fucked. I don't like using mechs to capture buildings, but I'm building one because you need all the mechs you can get in this map. If you have money for a mech, you build a mech. Um, Max will be building tanks and Kambai will be coming with tanks of his own very, very shortly. Um, if you don't do anything about them, um, you'll be fucked. Alright. So, you want to use these mountains uh, to the best of your ability. If you can take an engagement on a mountain, you take that engagement. It's really important. You also want to try to snipe this base rather early on. It is very possible to do it. Uh, this infantry will go elsewhere. Max takes his turn before combi. So, Max's infantry will choose going for this base over attacking my infantry. because Also because it's in the mountain and it's not a favorable engagement to him. These two bases are pretty off-limits, but you can potentially snipe this one later. You can you can choose which one to go for. I, def I, just, I, I choose this one because uh, this base is too close to combi's base, so he can usually reinforce up very quickly. But still... Um gonna build a mech and train for G. You always want to make sure that you build a unit on every single base. More than anything, you just need presence on the map. You just need units. You just need cannon folders to fill the spaces. Because you will be outnumbered, you will be outgunned, you need meat to, you know, block off things. Now, a real blessing just occurred. Um, Max decided to build an artillery. He does this from time to time. The AI has no bias on its build order, uh, regardless of commander, it, what commander he plays. It will build whatever unit it feels like building. Usually the AIs have a build order. This does, does not change from uh, commander to commander basis. So, uh, Max building an artillery is really good for us because naturally they are terrible and useless and most of the time they will just sit there clogging up space. Um, I'm pretty sure I can take this base now. Uh, it will... Max will probably... I, I actually can't remember if the AI prior prioritizes... Blah, blah, blah. Prioritizes uh, interrupting a cap rather than capping itself. Um, I actually don't know. Anyway, uh, we probably need to reinforce here if we want to... Uh, yeah, we'll have to join. But that's fine. Alright, so what we want to do now... This tank is going to roll in and it's going to deal a lot of damage to us. Um, we could cap this city. But if we want to cap this city, we're going to have to interrupt this guy. Now, at least our mech's in a mountain. So let's take Nell's luck into a, a consideration for, for a minute here. She will deal 58% damage, which gets rounded up to 60. So the infantry will have 4 hit points remaining. Due to Nell's luck, however, it should probably be closer to 3. You see? Because she deals a random number between 0 and 15. Because of this, one extra hit point was subtracted from the infantry. So instead of having 4 hit points, it had 3 hit points. This could very well result in the infantry not being able to knock a single hit point off this mech. So we have a full hit point mech on the mountain instead of a 9 hit point mech. If a tank attacks us, which I think this will, um, we'll retaliate a lot harder on the tank thanks to having 1 extra hit point. So already you can see how Nell's luck is changing the game. If this were any other CO, we'd have 9 hit point on the mech, and this infantry would have had 4 hit points. Well, naturally, if we like, unless we play on a, with a CO that just has more firepower. But that's not fun. So, we just want to build more infantry. Uh, it looks like the northern base might be left exposed. Let's see what... Yeah, Max actually decides to go for the base. Uh, this is one critical flaw in the AI's programming. It loves to go for buildings. And it will... Actually, Combi's tank... No! I thought Combi's tank was going to interrupt our camp, but I don't think he had enough movements. 
Right now, we actually have something really cool going on. Max's artillery is actually blocking himself off, so we don't want to kill this. In fact, we want to let him shoot on us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to place one of my infantry on the HQ, so that Max will keep shooting, and I'll just use these infantry as a wall. Here, Nell would deal anywhere between 35 and 50 damage. Normally, she'd only take 3 hit points of the infantry, but I'd wager she's going to take 4. And she did. Again, Nell. Very good CO. Now, this anti-air is kind of blocking the cap. However, we can, we might be able to steal this one, actually. So, as you can see right now, like, when I played with Adder on this map, I got demolished. I wasn't even able to get this far. But because I'm constantly getting favorable engagement with Nell, I'm able to get to this point. Alright, let's interrupt that. Um, the trick to this map is not always killing units. Uh, I don't like to kill units when I'm on a base. I'm actually just going to position this infantry here, but... And this is another fantastic thing about now. Um, normally, I'd only take one hit point off this um, uh, recon. But since I'm playing now, I think I'll be able to take two. Three hit points, actually. I, I took three hit points off the, off the recon. Isn't that just wonderful? Should have taken one. Took three. Even with Sammy, this would not have been possible. Because with Sammy's 11%, that would have just been increased by 30. You see? And 30% of 11 is... Uh, help me out here. Uh, not a lot. Certainly not 30. Right? This is why static numbers are so much better than a percentage multiplier. Because Nell just adds her firepower on top of her existing one. She doesn't multiply it by a percentage. Even if you deal... Like, if you deal 1% damage... A 50% damage increase is going to make that 1.5 damage. With Nell, not so much. Nell's going to deal 1 plus 1, 0 to 15. So Nell could very well end up doing 16% damage, which is, you know, 160% increase in firepower. No, wait, it's even more than that, isn't it? It's like 1,000... I'm not even going to start getting into math, but I'm sure you guys get my point now. Like, I, I'm... I'm not even sure how to word myself properly. If you still aren't convinced... Okay, there we had a case of her luck not kicking in, because you can get zero. Uh, and I think that's exactly what happened here, because she was supposed to deal three people points. Could it be that she got five or something, and then the coin flip didn't turn in her favor? But very rarely will you see that. I bet uh, if we attack this with artillery... Two hit points of damage to the artillery! Isn't that just amazing? And I think I forgot to place a unit on the HQ. I hope this won't retreat, because I really wanted to stay. Um, Alright, so now we actually find ourselves in a situation where we can build something other than a mech. I'm considering an artillery. It's gonna get... A no, it's not gonna get attacked by max. I think an artillery would be really good in this situation. So, yeah. We haven't even used our power yet. Ah, oh, okay, the, the anti-air. Okay, cool. The artillery, actually. Oh, nice! There was an infantry for the artillery to attack. That's great. Alright, Kambai is rolling in with a Vicious Fury. Um, this is actually a little bit annoying. But, again, Kambai is using a tank. Like, I'm occupying two tanks right here. They These tanks are not elsewhere doing damage. They are down here, where they can't do shit. Alright, so... Again, did four damage to Kambai's infantry. Lovely. So amazing. Of course, Kambai's defense does protect him against this. But it's still amazing. Right, so I could build a tank here. If I do that, I'm going to get horribly owned. So I shouldn't. Instead, I should probably just build a mech and hope that I can retaliate some damage. Um, and definitely, like, I am I think I'm out of the worst pickle, but now Kumbai's unit starts rolling in. And at this point, it gets really hard. So again, should do three hit points of damage. Did three hit points damage. Should do about three to four. Did four. Again, no, that's amazing. And uh, let's just do some more damage to come by. It's very important to do damage to come by on first strikes, because retaliation strikes are not going to do shit against him. Let's just kill this. Um, we're taking a lot of damage from come by right now. It's not cool, but... But we can build some more mechs, and so now we actually have some income, so that's good. This artillery is going to be very useful. we got to make sure we keep it alive. So, I'm quite afraid that Kumbai will take or start capping our base now. Mux built the rocket again. We are blessed by RNG. Um, 
Sometimes Max doesn't build indirects at all. As you can see, Kumbai is so fucking strong. It actually is a huge issue. But luckily, we have our lucky star. And there's no way I'm gonna save this. It is a skill! Thank you, now. So now we can deal between 0 and 60 extra points of percentage damage. Which is, needless to say, fantastic. Um, so we can average about 30 damage being done. Or 3 hit points of damage. So... First things first, we need to cap this or interrupt this. I actually don't want to use my artillery for this. I think I might be able to just do this. Alright, didn't luck out, but I can I can cap that next turn. And these tanks are useless, they can't do shit. I think I should actually position my artillery on the HQ. Yeah, that's exactly what I'll do. Um, I can probably destroy the sun tire now. I'm, ah, I'm not being very lucky with these numbers. But if I can take this base... That would be fantastic. Um, Alright, I can do a lot of damage to this entire, but it has too much defense. And I'm actually going to lose a building now, which is not very ideal. But maybe, as you can see right here, I don't know why I'm destroying a rocket, but at the very least I'll drain a lot of uh, repair money from Max. I think I can take this base, actually. I'll lose a base, but I'll take a base, which is really good. Um, I'm at least going to build... I'm considering being building another artillery, and I think I'll do it. Artillery is going to be very good on this map. Artillery are usually very slow units. When you, um... Okay. It's actually pretty good. He's using his low hit point infantry to cap buildings, instead of being annoying. Uh, he's not going to be able to cap the buildings. But as you can see, this map is really fucking hard. It's very hard to take... Oh, I completely forgot about Combi's uh, tank there. Um, suddenly, this I, I need to take this base. I need to attack this tank. Um, I actually want to kill this thing. And then I should just join. So I will get this base. That's really good. Uh, I lost one. That's not good. But I can take this base back. This is actually perfect. This infantry is shielding my infantry. Luckily, this tank will... Or hopefully, this tank will move away. That's, uh, oh, you see that? You see that? That's amazing. Holy shit. Like, I'm draining so much money from Max right now. It's it's amazing. Alright, we need to do something about that artillery. And we need to do something about this entire. So. Um, we can kill this. Do some damage with the infantry. You don't always want to kill low hit point units because they're actually sometimes a, a, a bigger bother for the enemy um, simply by just standing in the way and not to mention draining repair costs. Forcing your enemy to repair is actually a very viable strategy. Uh, because when you're forcing them to repair, not only are you clogging up bases, will he use... No, okay, he'll save for his max, uh, max blast. You're forcing them to not use their bases, and they're draining a ton of funds. Repairing is amazing. It takes a lot of time, costs a lot of money. It's really bad for the enemy to have to repair. Alright, I think I'll get the base now. Yep, I will. That's perfect. Um, we'll use the full hit point mech to take down this tank. Or maybe actually we shouldn't. I think we'll be fine doing this. Combi actually took another one of our bases. <laughs> Combine must have bases too. And this infantry has been so valuable. It's drained so much money from Max. It's gonna get destroyed now, but it doesn't matter. Actually, come to think of it, I should have moved the infantry down here. To make the tank spend a turn on it. It could actually Oh, I should have moved it down here. I think I don't think the tank would have one-shot it in. Oh, that would have been such a good move. Although I think Combine might have killed it with the artillery instead, but still. Missing plays like that makes me in a really bad mood, like. And there was a perfect play and I didn't do it. That would have been such a good play. So now I need to think, do I move this infantry over here? I think I will actually, yeah. Again, I'm really crippling Max by doing this. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of the recon. I don't like this infantry. There's not a lot I can do about it right now. Uh, I think I'll just start capping. I don't think I'll be able to complete it, but you never know. I'll need some beefy unit to hold the line here. I think I'm actually going to build my first tank. We'll build a mech here. 
a little bit of an iffy move, actually, now that I think. I should have just built an infantry. I need more infantry up in my base. Alright. Okay, crap. Here comes the super... Actually, I don't think the superpower will do anything. No, this superpower won't do anything. He has no direct units left. It will give him a 10% defense boost. That's pretty much about it. Uh, maybe he'll be able to tackle this tank. Yeah, okay. He, he was able to tackle this tank. But that was a really weak superpower. I'm more worried about Combice power. Alright, so Moral Boost, it doesn't give him more defense, it just gives him more firepower. Uh, Samurai Spirit is much more deadly, so I'm actually kind of grateful he used this Moral Boost here. I guess that kind of negates my potential play, because yeah, he would have one shot of that infantry. But at the end of the day, a pretty weak power from both of them. I'm pretty happy about that. Now, using my Lucky Strikes right now could be effective. I don't think I'm in any position to save my power, to be quite honest. I think I'm just going to have to use it. Let's have a little fun. Hmm. Oh, I love Advanced Wars. Alright, so... Let's see what we can do. Um, we need to do something about this infantry. It's actually kind of important. Um, we could attack. It's probably not going to go very well for us. I think it's probably better if we just camp. Distract him. Now we need to be careful because, okay, we need to do some damage to this in, uh, infantry. I think I'm just gonna pull back right now. Because there's some tanks incoming. Actually, this is scary. This is kinda scary. Um, I think I'm gonna have to do this. Because, if not, this this artillery will kill this infantry and then Combi's tank will come and kill my artillery. And if my artillery goes down right now, I am, I am fucked. There is literally nothing I can do. Let's take out their tanks. Um, I think I'm just gonna join here, actually, and cap this city. And right now, what I need is just a lot of infantry. We need to interrupt the caps to free up my bases. And then we'll build four more infantry. Just get some more presence out on the map. Infantry are such... They just give you more map presence, pretty much. They're very cheap map presence. Doesn't matter if the unit can't do much. If it clogs up a space, that is value in and of itself. And that is why infantry are so important. They're basically... They're like pawns in chess. Pretty weak, but you need them. Without pawns, you can't do shit. Except that infantry... Actually, in Super Famicom Wars, they could become queens. They could become uh, <laughs> proto-tanks. <laughs> Which, uh, in Super Famicom Wars, is actually a very nice uh, ideology. Okay, great. Combi's tank decided to go north and interrupt camps. This is great for us. We didn't want this tank here, trust me. Uh, that would have been really bad for us. So... Again, uh, artillery not being super cost-effective, but at least it's killing things. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. I'm capping here mostly just to distract Kumbai, more than anything else. Uh, I don't actually want to destroy this rocket. Uh, I, I actually want to I wanna, I wanna keep it here. <laughs> As you can see, Kumbai's entire wall, wall, wall. We just want to deal damage to these guys. The more damage we can deal to them, the better. The more annoying we are. The more repair funds they have to drain. We might be able to take this uh, this thing back now. All right, let's attack here. Again, so hard to take cost-effective trades against Combi. That's why he's so dangerous. We'll build a mech here, and then just keep spamming infantry. Yeah, we don't want to repair. That'd be stupid. But as you can see, I'm using my money each and every single turn. It's very important to keep doing that. Alright, he interrupted the cap, but at least, like, Max is basically gone at this point. If I can focus my firepower on the blue blue units and actually wipe him out, all of, like, he will lose and he will not be able to produce any more units. Um, since there is no HQ, you can't cap it anyway and get all the buildings, so... Like, Combine now has a rocket. I actually kind of regret not building a tank, because I could have hunted that thing down. And I'm really happy these infantry are a thing. And this infantry's job basically just to be annoying. Nothing else. I know I'm not going to be able to cap anything here. That's not the point. Uh, this mech will shred this tank if it stays. So we could actually send it down here. And since I'm now, I'm actually going to do this. It didn't pay off. I'd hope to take a hit point of it. But it didn't work. But I'm finally starting to get somewhere with Kumbai. I'm going to do this. Again, really hard to do anything about it by him, but, uh, you know, I have to take damage where I can take it. Um, move another infantry down here, move another infantry up here. 
I can't build a tank here because it's just gonna get shot down by the rocket, sadly. But I can build another mech here, it's sorely needed. Alright. He attacks, he attacks. Alright, so Max is basically not present on the map here at all. It's just basically just come by left. We're gonna keep doing damage to his rockets. Again, you see how I'm utilizing repair costs damage just to be an annoying asshole. Do damage to this, and right now, Combi's tank can't even keep up. It can't even interrupt all the caps, which means I'm in a good, really good position. I want to do something with this tank, uh, but I'm afraid of this mech. It's just going to get killed, so it, it's basically no points. I could go here and I could try to do some damage to the Santa here, but it, it has too much defense. At the end of the day, there's very little I can do. Now, what I could do, I could try take down combis no at the end of the day he had too much he had too much defense i was planning on attacking this rocket but it just wasn't doable it looks like i'll take the city back though which is a big victory for me kill this mech uh, now we have our power um just gonna build another infantry keep this keep this tank right here it could become useful later uh, let's kill this infantry, build a mech, another mech, and three more infantry. A thousand left over, we can save that for a rainy day. Again, maxes indirect units, even if they can't shoot, just don't do anything. I can't remember if they have less defense in this game. They used to have 10% less defense in Advanced Wars 1, but I'm not sure if that's a weakness that could carry it over. I kind of think it doesn't. Alright, okay. Our, our, our artillery took fire. That was a blunder on my part. I should have seen that. I didn't protect them properly. Now I'm gonna suffer some repair bills. Again, we wanna use our lucky star. Ideally, you want to save for Lady Luck because it's just insanely powerful. But in this situation, you, I kinda need all the power boost I can get, so... Alright, as you can see, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, against Kombai, its effect is somewhat lessened by the fact that, you know, his defense does such a good job counteracting the damage. Because even if you add it before damage, Kombai's defense still... There, there we got a lucky blow, as you can see. Kombai still reduces a significant amount. We could be getting really lucky here. We got pretty lucky. We want to join here. Try to uh, save the cap. Again, got super lucky there. What I like so much about Nell, and people give her a lot of crap because she's unreliable. The thing is, you don't have to play her unreliably. What you do is you play using probability. If you use probability more often than not, you're not going to hurt yourself. If you know exactly how much damage you will do, uh, you'll be able to take cost-efficient trade. Don't be like, oh, there's a chance I could attack this Samurai Spirit Neo Tank and do a lot of damage, but if I don't, I die. Don't take gambles like that. But in this situation, I know that I'll be doing at least about six hit points of damage to this mech. Close enough. It was a reliable gamble. Now, as long as you use reliability and do not take stupid gambles, just play it like you always would. Just smart. That is really the essence of playing Nell correctly. And if you play Nell correctly, she is insane. But her strengths are not very apparent on first glance. Max, again, uses a completely worthless power. I don't think that will give him anything. No, he doesn't even have any vehicles, so... The only thing this gives him is a 10% defense boost. That's the only thing he gets. However, we will get a Samurai Spirit on the next turn, which is not good. And we lose our artillery, which is also not good. I... That was a really sloppy play on my part. One thing I noticed when I play Advanced Force is that it fatigues me a lot quicker than Fire Emblem. I use my brain a lot more when I play Advanced Wars. Fire Emblem has a tendency to just be... You know, sometimes there's some tough decisions involved, but normally you're in the safe zone where it's not really that dangerous no matter what you do. Unless you do, like, super stupid things. But with Advanced Wars, I find that I'm using my brain a lot. 
And when I use my brain a lot, it gets tired. But this tank will probably die, regardless of what I do, so I'm just going to build more infantry. I'm actually not going to touch this artillery. I'm going to leave it. Alright. Um, let's uh, see if we can do anything to come by Smex. We can... Oh, that's perfect. We want to leave that at one hit point, so it goes back for repairs. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Let's see if we can do some damage to the APCs. Um, if we're lucky... We could potentially go and cap this base right here. That'd be great. Alright. Oh, did I not cap? I think I didn't cap. That might have been... Oh, I'm really starting to get tired now. I'm pretty sure I didn't cap. Alright, that infantry goes to attack my infantry. That's fine, though. Okay, here comes the Samurai Spirit. So basically, Kombai just activated God Mode for a turn there. Um, when he uses his Samurai Spirit, I think he gets 80% increased firepower and 60% increased defense. And, yeah, he also deals 50% extra damage on counter attacks. You, you just don't want to touch him when he uses this. It's, it's not possible to do damage to him. Um, even with Nell's freaking Lady Luck, it, it won't matter. So... Right. Ah, you can still do some damage to him, I suppose. He's not lash for a turn, but still. So... Wow, the tank actually survived. That is interesting. I was not aware of that. Um, I guess I can shoot. Could have gotten a lucky strike, but I guess his defense just reduces it to the point of no repair. So it doesn't really matter. It'll just take some time to reposition. I gotta remember that I can still attack Max's units. It's one of the frequent mistakes I do when playing against two CLs. I see Samurai Spirit and I think, oh no, I can't attack, but I keep forgetting that you can attack. You just have to attack the right CO. This is also why Colin is ridiculously weak in triple threats. Um, when playing with Colin, um, most of the time when you're... Like, I play a lot of 2v2 when all of my three friends are over. Like, my, <laughs> sounded like I only had three friends there. <laughs> I have more than three friends, but still. Um... When I, like, my friends that play Advanced Wars, when I have them over, uh, we often play triple threat matches, which is basically, I, I made some three player maps that are quite balanced. It's kind of hard to, to design a balanced three player map, but I think we found one that is really good. Just gotta think a little bit here. I think I wanna attack here. Okay. And basically, Colin is a ridiculously strong CO, but when we play triple threat, my, my, one of my friends, he loves to play Colin. He always gets ganged up on because everyone wants to fight Colin's units because they're weak. <laughs> this is a result. We found like Colin is terrible in triple threat match. If you play, for example, like Combi, we we ban Combi for the most part. But when he does get played, it's like nobody wants to fight Combi. So he, he gets even better because it's like, okay, do I want to attack an Andy tank or do I want to attack a Combi tank? Yeah, I think I'll take my chances with the Andy tank. So Combi just ends up being even better <laughs> in triple threat matches. All right. Um. Let's just destroy this now. Oh, we've actually cleaned up a lot of the troops, and I think I'm just going to activate my uh, Lucky Star immediately. <sighs> Would have liked to use Lady Luck at least once, but right now I just need to use it. So... Um, Nell's hit points, the troops on her hit points, or the, <laughs> the hit points on her troops, they are relevant to the damage she's dealing because they are added on top of the original value. But the value itself does not change based on our hit points. The value is 0 to 16. That will never change. So, even a 1 hit point infantry can deal 6 hit points damage if attacking a unit on the road. As long as there's no defense involved. I can feel my brain just slipping into uh, autoplay right now because I feel like I got this pretty much under control now. I'm actually feeling uh, rather confident. Yeah, as you can see, my map process is just spiraling out of control now. This is a small map, so I'd probably be able to beat it pretty quickly. Not sure what rank I'll get. Probably not a very high one. Getting good ranks in Advanced Wars 2 War maps, actually kind of hard. You need to beat them really quickly. I don't know what the number limit on this uh, map is, but surely I don't think it can be done very quickly unless you play Sami. And even then, it has no HQ, so for that reason alone, I think you have a pretty large uh, turn requirement. If I, if I bothered to play optimally, I probably could have beaten it a lot faster than I currently am. But right now I can feel like my, my entire head is very warm. 
and I'm quite tired, so I'm entering the autoplay mode. Which is the mode I usually play Advanced Wars in when I play with my friends. Some occasionally we have like really competitive matches that are really fun, and that, that then I really engage my brain because I because I'm enjoying the match. Most of the matches I play with my friends are over very quickly. Like on turn 10, one of the players have gotten such a significant advantage that it's basically just a face roll to the finish. And at that point, both players just turn on like autopilot and just plays to the end. We we don't like to yield. Normally we consider that bad manners to yield too early, because, you know, it kind of destroys the mood of the game if you just yield after 10 turns. You want to actually be able to get a game off. But both no both players know that the game is kind of lost, <laughs> just as, as soon as the momentum swings in one player's favor. Which is why I kind of enjoy playing triple threats, because triple threats have a tendency to be very back and forth, because when one player starts spiraling out of control, the other two kind of gangs up on him, and then he gets really weak, and then one of those players will become the stronger one, and then both of the weak players will gang up on him, and the power shifts back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And like, I love it when alliances are made and shit like that. Like, hey, we gotta stop him. Okay, you focus on that island, I focus on this island. Okay, you wanna have a truce? We have something that we call a gentleman's agreement, and basically, our gentleman's agreements always go to hell. Because they always end up with one player backstabbing the other. Uh, it's like, hey, we... <laughs> Usually the gentleman's agreements, they go something along the lines of, okay, I won't cap this building if you won't, if you will not cap this building. So let's just stop fighting over these two buildings. You can have this one, I can have this one. Agreed? And then the other player is like, okay, I agree to this agreement. Um, and then it's like three turns, and then suddenly like, hey, what... What are you doing? And it's like, well, I want the building, and now you moved all the units away, so I'm, I'm betraying you. <laughs> and I think among my friends, I am probably the least trustworthy one, so kind of my, my bro credit is very low when it comes to <laughs> gentlemen's agreements. There are not a lot of my friends who wants to make gentlemen's agreements with me, because they know I'll break my word really quickly. And then I have one of my friends who are really trustworthy. Like, who, who almost always upholds his uh, bargains, even if he's betrayed. He's like super lawful. And for that reason alone, his gentleman's agreements are worth more than mine. Isn't it amazing how things like that are born? Currency. Alright. Well, let's mop up these, uh, these guys. Looks like uh, Kamba is actually building a considerable amount of units over here. It's gonna actually be a little bit hard to crack them. Oh, would you? I actually hadn't noticed, but he's actually boxed himself in. This one hit point infantry is actually being a hero. Right here. It's basically clogging up Kumbai's troops because he's too stupid to move his troops away. Silence, Sonia! Kumbai must have artillery right here. Kumbai must have guards. But father, what is- Silence! Silence, Sonia! Like I, I, can, I can envision the dialogue going something along those lines. Yeah, silence, Sonia. You know nothing, Jon Snow. That was another show. Alright. So I guess I can start build, you, moving my units over here now. <laughs> if I was, if this was an intentional play, I'd be really proud of myself. Like, really proud. Like, using a one hit point infantry to clog up this many units. I can't believe I did it by pure chance. Alright, let's speed it up by saving up for some bigger units. A Neo tank would end this rather quickly, I'd say. But I think I made my point pretty clear. If you still don't think Nell is tier 4, you should now. I think I would actually like to see Nell go up against Colin or Kumbai. I don't think I've tried that much before, because we usually ban Kumbai and Colin from all our versus matches. We ban Nell pretty darn fast after seeing how powerful we, uh, he or she was. It took us actually many years to discover how powerful Nell was. Thing is, Nell is kind of a boring CO, so none of us really wanted to play her. So she kind of never got picked. Usually the CO's that we consider ridiculously overpowered are like... We usually, we, we usually try to utilize the tier list. Um, I actually haven't told my friends about the tier list, but we like... We all kind of agree that it's correct, like, even though they don't know about it. Oh, right, cool. We kind of have the same opinions of each CO. We think that, um, we think that, like, Sensei, uh, Kumbai, Colin, uh, Nell, Hachi, Storm, even Lash to some extent, are, like, the overpowered CO's. So we at least try to play overpowered CO's against overpowered CO's, but usually we enjoy playing the tier 1 and tier 2 guys. 
Most of the time, that's what we do. Just look at fucking come by, man. Holy shit. That's really what we try to do most of the time. So, if I play Sensei, then my opponent is allowed to play Sonya or come by. Sonya's tier 3. Um, let's uh, do a Neo Tank. Do, 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 do. But the steals that we play mostly frequently. Oh yeah, I kind of I was in the middle of the story. So yeah, uh, we didn't really discover how powerful Nell was until about two years ago, uh, when I decided like I was a little bit tired of playing Adder because I usually played Adder and before that I played Eagle on, and uh, suddenly I was like okay, I'm gonna start playing Nell because I want to you know play her a little bit because she doesn't get played a lot, and we started playing Nell and we just noticed that I was winning. I was winning every single match, like winning and winning and winning. And people were like, oh you're a fire man, you play so well. And I was like, am I really playing well? Because it seems like I'm winning these matches way too easily. And then we... Then I did some research, and I was like, holy shit, Nell is powerful. And my friends played Nell a little bit, and I was... Like, we swapped around. I tried to play one of my main CEOs against Nell. And I got absolutely obliterated, and... You see that? Amazing. I got absolutely obliterated, and my friend were like, okay. Okay, that's it. Nell, so bad. We completely agreed. We never played her since. But I actually haven't played Nell vs. Colin. I'd be very interested in doing that. Sounds like a very interesting matchup. Alright. There we go. Let's try to uh, wipe that. Come by mechs in mountains. Jesus, what the hell do you do against that? You cower in fear. You pick a god and pray. That's what you do. You build Neo tanks, that's what you do. Just need to wipe out Combi's remaining units and we should be good. I am actually gonna bring one of my Neo tanks down here, because I am super tired of these mechs. These motherfucking mechs and these motherfucking planes. God, I hate Combi mechs. Stop being so powerful, god damn it! Go. Should be dead now because I'm building Neo tanks every single turn. <laughs> Look at this APC. Lol, 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 lol. Now just need to clean up. And the mech is moving away. He's pretty much only building mechs now. The fucker. Bum 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 More Neo Tanks. Here comes the moral boosts. I gotta say, Kambai, you gotta hand it to you. Boosting your troops morale in a battle like this. Impressive stuff, really. Bum 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 Probably won't be enough. Fucking Kambai, man. Can't even break through this line with Neo Tanks. Joining there because I like full hit point neo tanks. Oh, one of his mechs actually got away. Shit. Shit. I can handle that though. Just like this. Just like this. And boom. Thou art dead. Well, not quite dead yet, but close enough. Alright. Build some neo tanks. The cleanup phase of Advanced Wars? Always a little bit boring. I wish there was like a. I really actually enjoyed Super Famicom Wars having like a. If you cap this many buildings, you win. Kind of thing. Kind of sped up the uh, games a little bit. Like, capture 75% of the neutral properties, and you instantly win. You get a cap victory. Like, multiple victory conditions is always a good thing. So let's just build a Neo Tank and a Normal Tank just to get the maximum amount of uh, power score. Or is it power or technique? I actually can't remember. I think your technique is how many you lost based on how many you destroyed. Hmm, look at that. Looks like a B. No, it's an A rank. Hey, look at that. And I could have done that a lot better. I could have. Uh, speed was actually almost perfect. I could have, I could have definitely uh, ranked that. I, I played very sloppily the like the past ten turns. I could have probably done it ten turns quicker if I played optimally. 
Technique, on the other hand, like power I maxed out on because I built all the power uh, tanks. but Technique is the tricky one on this because you need to essentially destroy more than you lose. And that's kind of hard in this map because you lose so much during the first 15 days. But if you play more, more, I think I should be able to get an S rank on this because you can... If I just had gotten 100 in speed and then 80 in technique, it would have been an S. Because everything above 280 is S rank, so... You do want that sweet 300 now. That's the best, but... Yeah. Nicely fought. See you again. So yeah, I'd like to hear from anyone who still thinks Nell sucks after seeing this video. Because I really, really want to hear your arguments for her not being a tier 4 CEO. Are you not convinced? Do I need to keep repeating myself? Let me hear in the comment section below. And if there's any other War Room maps you'd like me to beat. Can't really do much harder than this one, though. And yes, I know, the subscriber challenges. I got a whole heap of them waiting. I know you guys want to see me do them. I guess I'll have to at some point. Anyway, please remember to leave a like and a comment. It really does help out the channel a lot. And if you want to see more Advanced Wars content, you better leave a lot of comments because... If I see a lot of comments, I'll do more advanced words comment, con comments, content. If not, a lot. So, post comments. See you guys later. Goodbye.